In this episode, I'm going to provide a brief introduction to the online Web3 collectible card game Splinterlands for those new to the channel. And then we're going to discuss several things within the game that are happening currently that I think will change the future of the game as we know it. If this sounds interesting to you, please stand by. Hey everyone, welcome back. Bronze Dragon here saying, hey, thanks for dropping by. I appreciate your time. If you like this kind of content, please think about liking and subscribing. It helps, as we all say, I just passed the 900 mark of subscribers. We're shooting towards that 1,000. Appreciate it. Okay, with that said, what I wanna do is I wanna start off with a short description of Splinterlands. Now, lately I've had a big influx of people come into the channel and some people were wondering about the game. You may be interested, you may not. If you like card card games, especially collectible card games, you may be interested in it. Um, as a player of the game for the last few years, um, I'm kind of guilty of doing videos um, and not providing a lot of content for very new players because I've been around for quite a long time. And I'm sorry, but um, and we're not going to drill in real in depth. If you're new and you're interested in Splinterlands, go ahead and leave a comment um, and ask some questions. And um, maybe I can uh, form some uh, some new videos around those questions and, and provide some details. But Splinterlands is a collectible card game and it's played on the Hive blockchain. Now, don't get frightened off, um, but what this means is, just like Pokemon or Magic the Gathering in real life, you can buy card packs, you can open them, you can buy single cards on the market, you can buy them, trade them with other people online through a marketplace that's right in the game. It's very handy, much more handy than having to go down to your local card store and, and haggle to sell cards. But with that said, um, it's a little bit different than a lot of card games and a lot of card games like Magic the Gathering you play online. You have your hand and you play turn by turn by turn. Um, in this game, you are presented with a match and it has certain rules and certain um, uh, you can spend a certain amount of mana with your cards. You have to follow certain rules in each match. So basically every match is different. Well, most matches are different, right? And then you select your cards and how you're going to position them in your hand. And then the computer uh, runs the auto battle by the rules of the game and finds the uh, the winner of the game. OK, now, with that said, I did mention right up front, it is Web3, um, meaning that it runs on the Hive blockchain, which means you can buy and sell uh, the tokens involved in the game. And I, I don't want to dig in too deep and I don't want to scare people off that may be interested in a new card game. But with that said, that's basically what Splinterlands is. And we can take a look and I can just give you an example. We can look at my cards and you can see what I'm talking about. Let's go to regular foil. Um, and you know, they're separated in different colors or splinters. Um, for instance, blue is water, red is fire and so forth. And they have their, each have their different strengths and weaknesses. Okay, so um, I don't want to form this whole video around this, but I wanted to give you, uh, I wanted to give the new folks around here an idea of what Splinterlands is. Now, for those of you who've been Splinter, uh, playing Splinterlands for a while, you know what it is. Uh, this game is six years old at this point, um, so it's not one of those uh, uh, newcomers uh, on a blockchain. Okay, uh, at this point in time, um, card prices are really nice uh, because I won't lie to you. Uh, things are down. Uh, those of us who bought into the game a couple years ago paid very high prices because um, uh, there was a, a lot of action going on in the space. Um, and due to a lot of different changes uh, within the game, um, prices have come down on cards. So with that said, um, I'm still pretty bullish on the game. There's uh, uh, we're going to go ahead and transition in this video to talking about a few things that are going on within the game currently. But I just wanted to mention that right up front, there's some changes made and the team that works on the card uh, card game itself are concentrating on improving the game for new players to come in. So 
as we roll through this year, it becomes an increasingly better and easier time for new players to come into the game. Okay, so uh, we'll go ahead and that leads me into uh, the first talking point I want to talk about. The new thing this week is one-click set rentals, okay? So obviously, okay, you're a new player, you start playing a new card game, you gotta buy some cards, right? Well, in this game, you can buy them in packs, you can go on the market and you can buy them in singles. Um, you can rent them in this game for a very low fraction of the price of what it would cost to buy them. Or, like I just said, we can go over to the marketplace and now we have a tab at the top, set rentals, and with one click, I can go in and uh, rent a whole Chaos Legion starter set. That's 136 cards, and you can go in and rent them for as little as 185 DEC a day. Okay, so DEC for those new is called our. Uh, it's short for. It's an acronym for Dark Energy Crystals. And 185 DEC is about 15 cents, give or take, 14, 15 cents, something like that. So you can rent these cards for about 14, 15 cents a day and play the game and uh, possibly get into the mechanisms where you start earning within the game. Okay, there's a lot to it. Okay, I'm not going to lie to you. It has, uh, it's not a, a simple learning curve, and we're not going to dig really deep into this. But before this, if you wanted to rent cards, you had to go into the market and you had to rent each single card, right? Now, this is one of the changes they've made to start making it easier for new players in the game. So maybe you trying out the game and you're like, well, I don't know if I want to buy a bunch of cards. I don't even know if I like the game much, but I could I could rent cards for a few weeks and see if I like the game. And then if I don't, then no harm, no foul. Right. So this new uh, one click set rentals uh, is uh, going to change the game. I think it's in a good way and it's one of those steps that the team has made towards making the game a little bit easier for new players to get into. If I've piqued your interest and you're interested in trying it, uh, the game out, uh, check the show notes for my referral link. Please use it. I'd appreciate it. Um, now, let's jump over to the next topic of uh, discussion, which is probably not going to be interesting to those that are new to the game, although it may be, because I'll discuss the bigger picture around this. But within the Splinterlands, it's an interesting, um, it's not, it's something that's never been done really in a game before. You know, it's not like a standard game you have online. Okay. Without getting too deep into it, okay, there's one of the interesting mechanisms within this game that, and I'm not going to dig too deep into it, um, because it gets confusing fast, trust me. Um, that allows players to hold, um, I want to say stock because you get the idea, but hold an interest in the game and uh, allows you to vote on the future of various things within the game. Okay. And those are called DAO proposals. Okay. Now, this may or may not be interesting to you, but it's an interesting experiment in what I consider the future of gaming. Okay, I think that more and more and more games will tend to be this way. Okay, so with that said, uh, we're going to look at some proposals and we're not going to read through these because a lot of people that um, are actively playing Splinterlands are aware of these. But I just want to discuss a few of them um, just to give the new players an idea of what's going on. Okay, so actually under proposals that are live right now, we have two. We have higher SMC to develop five promo card sales, and we have higher JPTR Corp to develop SPS chain. And we've talked about these in past videos, and you can see that I voted for both of them. Um, obviously, uh, having five promo cards, um, well, five promo card sales, it'll actually be 10 cards, um, will be good for the company. And all involved, uh, there'll be some influx of money to the company, which is a good thing. Um, and I like the whole idea of the company treating or the Dow treating the company as a third party uh, and hiring it to make those uh, cards and then recouping part of the uh, proceeds. Okay, I like that whole idea. Um, 
So in this case, basically the Dow is going to hire the Splinterlands company to create these 10 cards and release them. Um, they're going to be purchasable uh, via by DEC, which in turn uh, pushes the motion on the flow the flywheel effect on SPS. And don't worry if you're new, this is all just uh, tokenomics talk. But basically, um, it's supposed to be theoretically good for both of the tokens. Okay, so uh, the DAO is going to hire the team to make the make and release the cards. The cards are going to be sellable. Uh, you can buy them in DEC, which should push DEC, which should in turn push uh, SPS. Okay. All that say, hey, we've got 10 new promo cards coming if this goes through and it looks like it's going to go through. Who doesn't like a new card, right? Okay. So the second one is hire G JPTR Corporation to develop the SPS chain. Another thing that's been ongoing is the nodes uh, and the development of the nodes to run the actual Splinterlands transactions on separate from the high blockchain. And I'm not going to jump into it because it gets really deep fast and I don't even understand it 100%, right? But this has been an ongoing thing. They sold the nodes a couple years ago to people. These cost big money and the people uh, who invested in them uh, have been getting a little bit at a time back in SPS and vouchers, but now vouchers are possibly on the way out or to be changed somehow. So this whole thing is in flux right now. However, um, JPTR is the um, one or two or three people, I don't know how many people they are, that have been working on this project recently. They were hired on by the company a few months ago um, and uh, they've been working on it for a while. So Matt in the, town, the most recent town hall did express and uh on a couple shows he's been on lately he did talk about this and i think he expressed a um uh, sound reasoning on why they should be hired on to go ahead and develop out the sps chain um and you know to me uh it's to me it's no brainer saying hey the sps uh, or the dow should pay for this because that's what the dow money is for Okay, so uh, I'll step back for a minute. If you disagree with anything I say, go ahead and leave in the comments. We'll talk about it. Okay, so um, I'm just expressing uh, how I see uh, how things are going down. Okay, now uh, before the uh, and next up, we have a couple draft proposals. Okay, if you're new to this, first the proposals have to go through draft form, and if they get voted through, then they go to full proposal vote. This is very much like being on a board of directors or something where you have control of vote voting things in. So that's why I go back and I say this is a at very least, you know, I've been in it a couple years now. It's a very interesting um, experiment in gaming. Um, so either way, uh, these two are convert and power up uh, to swap hive and then the soulbound reward card proposal immediate and ongoing accessibility. So I'm not going to read through the whole thing, but I think the gist is uh, the way I'm understanding it is we have a bunch of swap hive sitting there. And this is basically money that's been sitting idle um, in an account. And what they want to do is convert that to actual Hive and then stake it so we can use it to vote for the actual Hive proposal that would provide funding to the team that's actually out there in the request to the actual Hive infrastructure. So I voted for that. So on this second one, for those new, um, we have cards that are called, uh, referred to as Soulbound, okay? Uh, if you've ever played an MMO or something like that, you know what the term Soulbound means. You can't buy, sell it, or trade it, right? Uh, you get it and it's yours, okay? So in Splinterlands, Soulbound cards are earned through playing the game, basically, in various forms, okay? Um, versus uh, on the other side, you have cards that you buy in packs and everything. Those you bought, you can you can trade them, you can buy them, you can sell them, you can send it, you can give them away. I've given away packs, I've given away cards, I've sold them, I bought them, bought plenty of them, right? Um, but the soulbound ones you cannot, and they're basically a reward for playing the game. Okay, uh, as a another YouTuber named Dwayne Cunningham says, for your time and attention. Okay. Um, but there's been this ongoing discussion with the game over the years about uh, uh, how can we unlock 
those soulbound cards, people that have been playing for a while, um, how can we unlock that? And there's a lot of different branches to this discussion, but uh, suffice it to say that we're on the ro road and uh, on the road to unlocking the um, the most recent Soulbound card uh, collection, okay? Um, and uh, there are a lot of ideas floating around out there. Uh, Matt has talked about these on uh, a few of the last few town halls. Um, this proposal is uh, looking at that. And once again, you can go to this proposal and draft proposal page and read the details. Um, but it details a few things that would allow the cards to become uh, unlocked faster. But... Uh, incurring a higher price. Okay. Uh, so I voted for it. Um, I don't necessarily know that the prices involved in unlocking these cards that they've talked about lately. Um, it's just been so, so high that I don't even know um, if I would do that in certain situations. There's some very strong cards, very playable cards, very popular cards. Um, that I may uh, unlock uh, for future purposes of selling. Um, but I, I don't necessarily know how I stand on that right now and if I'm going to spend money on those. So uh, with that said, that is the second draft proposal that's up. So if you're a player in Splinterlands and you have SPS staked, go cast your votes. Uh, if you don't, if you're new to the game and you have any questions, just drop them in the comments. Also, if you've made it this far, thanks for sticking around. I appreciate it. Uh, every Saturday from 1130 Eastern Time till 1230, usually, sometimes it runs over uh, 15 or 20 minutes, uh, uh, sometimes a half hour, it, depending upon how good the conversation is going. I have a live stream right here on YouTube. Um, so that's every week, uh, every weekend, Saturday, 1130 to 1230 Eastern. So if you want to stop by, talk some Splinterlands. Uh, we also talk about other games as well, uh, what everybody has on their mind as far as uh, Web3 gaming goes on. Um, but for the majority, we talk Splinterlands. So with that said, this has been Bronze Dragon. I hope everyone got something out of this. Uh, at least I hope you didn't fall asleep on me. But thanks for stopping by. I hope everyone on your side is happy and healthy. And I... We'll see you in Splinterlands. Mm -hmm.